Chris Petri here. It's part four. I just poured a new cup of coffee here, fresh cup of coffee. And we're working on our final details of this uh, painting. We're, this composition is um, the pre-work that we do before we do a, a full painting, finished painting. We worked out all our ideas here pretty much and we have a very pleasing looking composition. Um, we're going to finish up the final details so we'll go in and we'll do some darks here on the right hand side and again we were working from originally uh, a photograph of the beautiful boardwalk in New Jersey Wildwood New Jersey and then we have um, the painting I did well, it's about a uh, 8 by 10 or so and nice impressionistic looking painting loose it's uh, fresh looking and so we're working on our final parts in our composition here to try to get our idea of that three part glazing which is one part super light light glazings in the beginning let that dry going in with our second wash our second or second glazing which is the medium tones and then our final tonal values which is the darks so now we're finishing up our darks in our details here so we'll put some shadowing under here this is a sign and we'll might be an awning and it's nice to have some uh, bright touches of color so I'll put some cadmium red over here on the right hand side and a little bit of cerulean blue maybe and then we'll we'll do some more work here we'll do a there's like a sign sign over here and then we're going to do some of those some of the uh, steel and metal support uh, members that Hold up the signs at the at the buildings and the uh, eateries and everything that's along the boardwalk here. And the closer we are in the painting, the foreground, you, you see a little more detail. And maybe I'll go in and get some of that nice red color and we'll just do a little pretend signing of some signage and some words on there. You know, we're doing an impressionistic style here, so we're just keeping it loose and free and not worrying, getting too caught up in the all the minute details. And then we have... Um, Maybe we'll do some windows over here. And I'm just doing the shadowing under some of the areas of these buildings over here. It looks like there's some eateries and restaurants over here on the right side. And since this is just a composition, we're not too worried. I just want to get the idea of the darker tonal values that we're putting in here now. Then we'll go in with some a uh, little more lighter tone of values to do the. Um, we're going to do the roller coaster in the distance here. This gets done loosely, freely. We're not too concerned. We're going to have the nice. So we're doing like the steel work. Those are all the steel 
members of the of the roller coaster. So I'm just doing some X's and slashes and and that's enough to give the indication that that's the roller coaster over here in the distance in the far distance that gives us a nice background. And all right, so that's another sign there all right that's looking okay and then we have um, some directional lines on the on the foreground here those look good just doing nice and quickly that kind of uh, and then up close you might see the the actual boards and things but I think it looks better just to keep it And then we're uh, we're going to do some overhead lines, maybe. So those I'll just mix up some some gray color, some blue, and some burnt umber with my needlepoint brush. And then I'll use a little bit of tissue here and just tap off a little bit of the paint and then I'm looking here and there's there's lines that go across and there's you know some phone lines maybe some cable lines there's um, so we use those in the painting and and then there's some there's some lights And you can get into as much detail. We don't want to go too crazy with details, but that the light posts uh, give a nice uh, the lights give a nice. Uh, you can build a lot of depth in your painting by doing like some lighting, or some telephone poles or whatever. But I would stick with what's in the photograph. So there there was some lights in the photograph like this. So those look good. And I think we have the idea here that we did our three glazings and we can see that once we added our final darks, our darkest tonal values here, as you can see, here and here and in between the awnings and the shadowing and the figures have some darker tonal values and the buildings over here makes everything um, look very much uh, vibrant, alive, exciting. And then we just take this idea of the three-part glazing technique to a finished painting where we want to do a nice, loose, impressionistic style painting. And um, we use that three-part glazing technique to help us to, to capture all the details but not be overly exhausted by trying to capture all those details with real, accurate, uh, accurate, real accuracy. We can just do a loose interpretation of what we're seeing with our three-part glazing technique. Um, a lot of artists use this technique. This is probably the most popular watercolor technique, of course, the um, glazing technique of lights to darks. And you can also paint this a la prima, which you can start off with some darks. But uh, this, this, this very busy scene happens to work really well with the method of using the lights to the darks, you know, in the three-part glazing technique. 
and you can add in some more details but I think this is plenty of details here actually um, there could be a couple more figures here in the center that would make it look a little more interesting maybe more true to life to what the photograph looks like but for the most part you can see this is a really good solid technique um, and, a, and of course this is a composition and then you just use this as your guide when you do your finished painting where you're going to do an 8 by 12 or you know, 16 by or 18 by 24 whatever um, size paper you'd like to use and and paint in you just have to use some uh, larger brushes and a little more paint and um, your technique just has to be a little more um, careful as you're painting larger that means you know drying times happen faster but we're gonna do that and one of our next videos coming up soon I'm gonna do uh, enlarging the format and how you achieve working in larger sizes with your watercolors um, and being able to do that with um, less stress and less worry um, trying to step up the sizes on, on the watercolors. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this series. It was a lot of fun to do, and I want, you know, please try this. Um, see how this glazing technique works for you. Um, it's good to practice all kinds of different techniques because it'll just only help you to do your watercolors more easily and have more fun with it and uh, less stressful. Okay, we'll see you on the next video.